ओम शांति बाबा टेल्स अस सो मेनी थिंग्स इन द मुरली एवरी डे बाबा ऑल्सो कॉशन्स अस अगेंस्ट मेनी वेज इन विच माया कैन अटैक अस यस बट स्टिल यू नो Maya does succeed in attacking us is it not <laughs> and how do you realize when maya has attacked you yes not when you feel bad not when you uh, you know when your mind is in a fizzy no these things can happen all the time but you understand maya has attacked you when you are not able to follow the disciplines that baba has taught you when you start missing classes when you start feeling sleepy at amritvela or even feeling sleepy at amritvela is not a big deal but when you start deciding that you should not get up at amritvela because you're feeling sleepy that's when maya has attacked you or when you start uh choosing impurity whether it is impure actions impure food impure uh you know whatever baba tells you not to do when you start doing all of that then maya has attacked you and when maya stops you from thinking about being a seva dhari so maya stops you from using your body mind and wealth and seva that's also an attack of maya so these are the way we ways we understand that maya has attacked us now how why does maya attack us in in spite of you know baba giving us so many cautionary notes every day in the murli because when we listen to the murli we don't churn it enough to understand what baba is saying yes and there's a difference between theory and practical so let's say uh you go to a chemistry class in school and you understand the properties of a certain chemical yes maybe you know hydrochloric acid you understand the properties of hydrochloric acid and you have read it in theory very well but somebody places a bottle of hydrochloric acid before you can you identify this is that same thing yes sometimes it's very difficult because you know it as something that's written on paper but you cannot discern it when it's in a practical form in a bottle before you but if you use your if you are a little silent and you use your power of discernment maybe you will figure out yes if you smell it and then you start thinking about what does the smell what does the description of the smell match <laughs> as i studied in school so then maybe you will be able to discern it i remember there was this one image and um, and especially you know baba always tells us that understanding with images is very easy yes so i remember that um in my geography class i learned about stalactites and stalagmites so these are calcium deposits that happen sometimes in certain architectural areas so um years later when somebody showed me um a picture of where they had been and it was full of these structures so i told them these are stalactites and stalagmites i read it in my geography class <laughs> so they said uh, so you remember so i said i don't remember that i remember the image so i had seen this image so it's the same image so i remember it so you see it's very easy to um to understand something that you have seen a picture of yes let's say 
even in your chemistry class if you have seen an acid with very sharp blue color <laughs> so it an image of that I don't know what is that cobalt sulfate or something I don't remember so that kind of a but uh, shining blue image of an acid and then you see that acid you will be able to identify because it's easier to learn in images but you see Baba's Murli doesn't come in pictures so Baba, Baba has created pictures for us uh, like the picture of the soul or picture of Baba or picture of the cycle all of these pictures were created but apart from that you see uh, Baba, Baba talks in language Baba doesn't um, read, give the murli in pictures or images so sometimes you see it's, it becomes very difficult to create a picture of what Baba is actually telling us yes so what would uh, so take an example of Baba saying that you shouldn't be impressed by someone so do you think about it enough and try to figure out what being impressed looks like how would you behave or what would be your practical signs when you are impressed by somebody so Baba talks about today not being impressed by somebody because then you will not be safe anymore safe from the attack of Maya but do you understand that even while saying that Baba today said that you shouldn't be impressed you can be pretty impressed <laughs> while you know there's a story and I always relate it and it's my favorite story of a group of parrots who were told who were taught to you know sing the song that the hunter will come and they will you know spread the <laughs> grain and then uh, you don't fall into the trap because he will take you so the parrots kept singing this story and the hunter came spread its <laughs> net and the, the parrots were caught in the net because they were attracted to the grain and after getting caught in the trap also they were singing happily the hunter will come he will set the trap don't get caught so they are already caught and they are singing that same story <laughs> so <laughs> this is something that sometimes occurs to me that Baba is giving us so many cautionary notes about Maya but you know when we will be able to discern Maya not by understanding what Maya is or how Maya will be because you see when um, when a soul is tainted by vices then those vices cast a spell around the soul and the buddhi doesn't work at that time and even if you know everything you will not be able to relate to it at that time and I will tell you one incident from my own experience wherein I was in a situation where uh, I saw somebody who had um, who had recently started a jewelry shop and in that jewelry shop what happened is they inaugurated it and then uh, for around many days for around 15 days there were no customers and then you see there was a thief who came disguised as a customer and this person who was owning the jewelry shop he was a very experienced man he knew everything about thieves and he knew about their ways in which they steal and he knew everything but still the thief managed to take away a lot of gold from that shop and then um, when I asked that person because I knew that fellow very closely and I asked him why did you why why is it that he was able to dupe you despite you being so so experienced so you know what that brother said he said that 
I was duped because I was greedy. And uh, for 15 days, nobody bought anything. And I was so desperate to get a buyer that I couldn't see that this is not a buyer, this is a thief camouflaged as a buyer. So, because you are so consumed by your own desire or what you want or what you're looking for, that you lose the sense of how to discern what it actually is. And this is why Baba always tells us that you must win over Maya by winning over your vices. You cannot conquer Maya by understanding Maya or avoiding Maya because you see Maya has no job, Maya has to be after you. <laughs> so right from morning till night and every day Maya will present you with hundreds of thousands of situations and Maya will come in many ways because that's Maya's only job. But how many times will you detect and will you discern? And sometimes, you know, uh, I have seen that, you know, uh, even souls who discern one face of Maya once, twice, thrice, they fall into that trap the fourth time, fifth time because they give up. <laughs> so let's say something happens and you are able to stay unaffected and you are able to protect your peace and uh, you are able to protect your yourself once, twice, thrice. But that, that instrument of Maya is very relentless. They are not giving up. So they are continuing every day, every day, every day, every day. And then what happens is you suddenly lose that uh, will to, you know, uh, discern and decide so much and then you give in to that and I remember that there was this one Mata and she uh, she left the path she uh, she stopped uh, com coming to class she stopped being into the practice and when I asked her she said that uh, my husband doesn't like it so I said uh, it's okay, but he didn't like it earlier also when you came into Gyan. So what happened? So he said, he has more power than me. <laughs> I, I want to come and he stops. But you know, my willingness to come is not as great as his willingness to stop. And he is so persistent. He is always, all the time, you know, stop, stop, stop. He is relentless. And when he's so relentless, I couldn't muster the willingness to, you know, continue despite that. So I gave up. And she told me this very beautifully that I just gave up because I couldn't understand how to, uh, how to win over this constant, persistent thing that he's doing. So I got very tired and I gave up. So you see, sometimes... Um, so Maya has no job. Maya will make somebody the instrument and Maya will just be very persistent. But you have to understand that you have to be equally persistent. Otherwise, you will lose in the game. And Baba says that this is a very big game. And if you lose against Maya, then Maya wins and you don't go to Satyug. And if you win over Maya, then you become a king in Satyug. So it's a game of lose and win. <laughs> and when you are playing a game of winning and losing, you need to be very skilled. You need to be an expert in discerning Maya and you need to be an expert in using your powers and virtues and knowledge and winning over Maya. So Baba tells us all these things in the Murli and uh, I will talk about, uh, I will talk about two, three things today. First is being impressed by somebody. Yes, so if you have lust in you, 
you will get impressed by somebody's looks, somebody's uh, you know style, somebody's uh, personality, external personality, not the divine personality. So these appearances or somebody can do something, yes, somebody is uh, somebody skilled at something, they have a speciality that will start impressing you. Have you seen people impressing you with their money and other stuff also? So they impress you with those things also because uh, if you have greed and if you have attachment to things then people who have the, the, those things they can impress you with that. If they are good to you, yes, if they are bad to you it will invite jealousy. But if those people who have a lot, they are very good to you, you will get impressed not by them or their goodness, but what they have. <laughs> so that is also something that you can get impressed by. You can get impressed by somebody having some contact, some power. And have you seen that if you are a weak soul, you can also get impressed by somebody's help and kindness. So somebody is helping you, somebody is giving you a support at some time when you need it and what happens is you get caught up in that because um, you are a weak soul and then you are not able to discern that this person is not, is just an instrument and it is Baba who is helping me and you get caught up in that person that this person is kind, they are helping me, they are giving me and uh, you get caught up in their uh, drama. So when you get impressed by somebody, what happens is they start having some control over your buddhi and mind. So whenever you are impressed by somebody's quality, somebody's looks, uh, and I am specially telling you, even kindness can impress you, even compassion can impress you. And I remember there was this one um, young brother, he was I think 15 or 16 and um, uh, his mother, he, um, she brought him to the center and she kept telling me, my son doesn't listen to me, he listens to my sister and my sister has a different agenda but my son is always listening to her, Didi, what do I do? So I asked the, the, the brother, you know, the Kumar, I asked the Kumar, why is it that you listen to your Masi? Why do you like her so much? I was very casual in asking her, him. I asked him, your Masi is very good, right? So she said, yes, my Masi is great. So I said, why do you love her so much? So he said, I love her because she's always giving me something. She she's always kind to me. Whatever permission I want, she gives me. So you see, and I asked him about his mother. He said, my mother is very strict. She's always wagging a stick and <laughs> she's always teaching me discipline and I don't like it. So you see that somebody who is taking you downhill is impressing you because you don't have the discernment between what feels good and what is good. So you know it always feels good if somebody feeds your vices, doesn't it? Yes, but it doesn't feel good when somebody really guides you in the right way. But sometimes you don't have the discernment and you get impressed by somebody who is trying to act good without having good intentions. And the thing is that intentions are very difficult to understand. Intentions are only understood much later when consequences are already <laughs> faced. And at that time, you know, there is a lot of repentance that then people come and they say, you know, this one deceived me, that one deceived me. But the thing is, if you don't understand, uh, that's, uh, so I will give you two things today. First thing is, if 
anybody or anybody's company is taking you away from purusharth and seva if you see yourself going away from purusharth and seva if you see yourself going away from uh, you know your discipline of amrit vela your discipline of class your discipline of seva your discipline of a pure life that's something that's a red flag and you have to be very careful about it so these are particular signs where even if somebody uh, feels very good some company is feeling very good be very wary that it is not good because it's not doing any good to you and even externally if they are giving you support compassion kindness or whatever or they are becoming you know uh, they are uh, they are talking about uh, you know they are the enemy of the same enemy that you have <laughs> so these are also things that people bond at so you know somebody is just talking ill about somebody you don't like so that's okay but the thing is that what are they doing to you what are you becoming in their company and if you understand if you look out for these signs that what was my timetable yesterday and what is my timetable today am i going into waste and vices or am i going nearer to baba am i going nearer to following shrimat and doing seva if you are able to see this much then you will be able to discern what is maya and what is not maya and if you want to conquer maya that's a different game so you don't conquer maya by discerning maya because power to discern and decide is a separate power but power to conquer is a separate power so you need that power from baba and only when you are walking on the path that baba is showing you and winning over your vices so if there are vices within you if there are sanskars which are very in consonance with those sanskars which maya is trying to trigger then you cannot win over maya because they maya uses your own sanskars against you yes so somebody is talking sweetly to you but you don't have the sanskar to discern between sweet talk that elevates you and sweet talk that takes you down yes do you know that in the world people say that wolves are very sweet have you heard the story of the wolf who uh, came as disguised as an aunt and cheated the child <laughs> so it's the story of i think it's the story of um, red riding hood or something that we read in the uh, in our you know when we are little so these are stories that are told to us so that we understand that everybody who is talking sweetly is not necessarily sweet so what are they doing to you what are they making you if somebody is putting you on the path of discipline and somebody is putting you on the path of discipline that baba teaches you that's that's your friend and if somebody is taking you away from that that's not your friend so baba says do not get impressed by someone or something and when you get impressed when you fall into the trap of you know if you have i will tell you one um, one thing that i have observed that when we come to baba it is at the end of 63 births and we have been looking for love right and um, love is something that everybody seeks everybody wants uh, somebody to be sweet and nice and loving to them but the thing is we have to understand that nobody is more loving than baba and in the world baba and baba's instruments are the only ones who give real love otherwise everybody in the world has an agenda behind their love <laughs> and 
don't fall into the trap of somebody being very loving to you so if somebody is very loving to you also the, you might get impressed and then you fall into that trap but when somebody is loving to you thank baba that baba has made that person loving and when baba can make that person loving then why can't baba change you from somebody who seeks love to somebody who gives love so take that from baba and change change from from somebody who yearns for love to somebody who gives love to everybody so baba tells us that instead of getting caught up and getting impressed by somebody who is giving you something understand that i am not a beggar this person is not a giver the giver is baba and i have to have buddhi yoga with that giver and i have to change from a beggar to a giver i don't have to be impressed by a giver of something i have to impress or i don't have to be impressed by an embodiment of something let's say somebody is a very good you know counselor or somebody makes you understand many things but who is the greatest counselor baba so learn that out of count uh, that art of counseling and change yourself from somebody who is seeking counseling to somebody who is giving counseling <laughs> so baba says that don't get impressed by anybody because every soul today is empty and when they offer you something they are just you know that's just like a bait and the moment you fall into that trap what they are going to do is eat you up <laughs> because that's the plan <laughs> just like you see the fisherman he throws a bait and when you fall for it what did they do they do they catch the fish and that fish is eaten up so don't fall into these baits because everybody is a fisherman they are not baba <laughs> so what you have to do is you have to see that everybody is good and have faith that everybody has virtues everybody has specialities but don't get trapped in anybody's speciality or goodness or looks or money or help or compassion don't get trapped in all of that and i will tell you one thing nobody who is really compassionate will uh, try to make you dependent on them you know what is real compassion real compassion is when you make somebody rise above their weakness yes so if you are looking for company somebody who makes you free from that seeking of company is compassionate not somebody who gives you that company temporarily yes they will give it to you temporarily but then they will also try to make you independent but if somebody is not doing that for you but they are instead feeding that dependency in you that means they want you to be weak and dependent so you must understand these faces of maya and i am telling you very practically what being impressed looks like and what happens is when you get impressed by a soul you cannot see baba again because you know we i remember you know there was this mata and she used to tell me something very nice she said i am very thankful to all the people who broke my heart because only through those crevices of the broken heart i could see baba <laughs> she said because my heart was so broken i think the light of baba entered the heart because you see we are so body conscious we always want the company of humans but and sometimes when there is a human who we get impressed by and they are giving us company then we forget baba then we forget what baba is teaching us telling us 
what Baba is making us because you see instant gratification is very attractive. You don't want to leave it. You want that, you want that, you know, uh, because sometimes we feel that we couldn't get, get that person so we got Baba. And then when somebody is acting like that person, you don't care for Baba. <laughs> but the thing is, that person is going to leave you very wounded one day. And you will have lost all your time of Purusharth. So this is why don't get impressed by anybody. It becomes a very big door for Maya. And then when you get impressed, you're not able to see that you got Baba and you got away from Baba because you got caught up in this company. And Baba who is going to give you the inheritance for a whole new cycle, that inheritance you are throwing away for what? For this one act of getting impressed. So be very wary about these things and whenever you see some goodness, some kindness, some speciality in somebody just know that the giver is Baba and when they you are not a taker <laughs> you are not a taker and they are not givers the giver is Baba and you want to be the giver of that speciality you don't want somebody who wants to take benefit of that speciality so you want to be an embodiment of that speciality that gun that virtue that quality that speciality rather than being impressed with them about that. So this is something. And then Baba Tudi tells us that uh, and also you see take very good care of be becoming a conqueror of Maya by winning over your vices. Don't feed your vices. You know when circumstances are favorable we don't starve ourselves of our vices, we start feeding them. Yes, so when uh, you get a platform where you can be angry and not guilty, <laughs> you start using your anger, don't you? Yes, so if you are living in an environment where everybody is subservient to you and they don't mind or don't object to your anger, you start using your anger very often and saying that I am right because they can't back answer. But the thing is, Baba says that this will cost you big time in future. So even if you have the opportunity, refrain from lust, anger, ego, attachment, greed. Even if you know you are in a position where your ego is handled well, your ego is not minded. Have you been in that environment? If you are the boss in a, in a company and you are very egoistic, people will not call you out for that. But you have to understand that even while you have a platform where you can be very egoistic, you have to be humble. So Baba says that work on your vices, not only when they are costing you, but even when they are not costing you, discern that this is a vice and I have to give it up. And how do you give up a vice? By not using it. The simple law is, if you don't use it, you lose it. Yes, and if you use the opposite of the vice, if you are always using humility, then you can win over ego. Whether it is in speech, whether it is in attitude, develop humility. What is humility? not seeing the other one as less than yourself or more than yourself. But always maintaining this attitude that I am Baba's child, this is Baba's child. And having that relationship where you are respectful and loveful in every situation. So cultivate these virtues, cultivate the, uh, you know, the virtue of being contented and satisfied. And how do you cultivate that? By always telling yourself, Baba has given me more than I need. Never tell yourself, I don't have this, I don't have that. Don't create discontentment within yourself. Because you see, the truth is, you can never have everything. <laughs> yes, because in this world, it's not possible to physically have everything. 
but it's a psychological thing where you train yourself into believing you have everything or you train yourself into believing I don't have this or I don't have that. So it's up to you to choose which one you want to, you know, how you want to talk to yourself and what kind of a feeling you want to create within yourself. So Baba tells us that, you know, win over these vices because these vices and Baba is giving us <coughs> the opposite of vices. Yes, Baba is giving us Swaman that I am, you know, I am calm Jeet, I am absolutely peaceful, I am respectful, I am humble and take that Swaman and practice putting that Swaman into action. Practice creating a Sanskar out of that Swaman and when you do that you will win over vices. So A, discern Maya. B. Win over Maya because we found Baba after 5000 years and we don't want to go away from what Baba is giving us and I don't want any child to not, you know, to not be able to take benefit from Baba because you got duped by Maya. So Baba wants you to be very disciplined, follow Srimad and anything that takes away from you takes you away from following Srimat and doing Seva is Maya. Okay, Om Shanti, 